What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, 10 worst WWE WrestleMania main events ever. WrestleMania is this week. So, you know, I got to do some WrestleMania related videos. I'm going to actually try. This will be the first time I ever do this on this channel and the first time I've actually watched Monday Night Raw in years in this entirety. I'm going to try to live stream Monday Night Raw this week. So, if you guys want to see that, make sure you let me know down below. Hey, definitely live stream the Go Home Show for Monday Night Raw. I'm going to try to this week. Uh, I'm going to be doing my thoughts and opinions videos. We will be live streaming. Uh, I think the first night of WrestleMania, it may just be me and Brandon. Only because Dub is going to be celebrating his birthday this week. He's going to be celebrating with his family. So, this weekend, I know that's going to be a big priority. So, he may miss the first night. But the second night... He should be there. That should be Sunday. He should be available. So, yeah, man. We got a lot of wrestling stuff going down this week. So, be prepared. Channel's about to be going crazy with the wrestling, uh, with the WrestleMania-related content. So, let's get right into this one, man. Uh, there has been some uh, Mania, uh, uh, main events that were just quite lackluster. Let's see which ones they pick, man. Let's get into it before by me no less so you know this is right that the main event of wrestlemania is the most important wrestling match of the year no other match is tasked with making as much money compelling as many pay-per-view purchases or getting as many people from <coughs> many different places into one building you could argue that over the years the wrestlemania experience as a whole has become more of a draw than any single match but you wouldn't know from how wwe are treating this year's the main event of night two has a lot going on reigns versus lesnar three title versus title winner take all winner take paul Tri versus <laughs> Ponytail, God versus Titan, and I'm pretty sure the loser will be taken out back at the AT&T Stadium and shot. I think it's in the contract. And by right, <laughs> it should be very good. Because ever since Mania went to two <sighs> nights, all the main events have been stellar. Boneyard, McIntyre, Brock, Belair, Banks, Edge, Brian, Reigns, which got us thinking about all those times when the biggest and most important wrestling match of the year has been a bit... Man. Pants. I'm Adam Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and here are 10 worst WrestleMania main events ever. So here's a little trade secret for you. Did you know that if you dye your hair blonde, it makes it easier to hide the fact that your hair is thick? matches and actually released a documentary about how disappointed he was in his intended farewell match against the big dog. That's given us free reign to point at it and say, yeah, that undertaker spent mm -hmm. most of the match wandering around like he'd lost his keys it was glacially paced clocking in at a ludicrous 25 minutes and each blown spot just makes your soul feel that little bit smaller the end of a wrestlemania main event shouldn't make you feel relieved it was over yeah. no matter how much we love the devil's favorite demon's favorite brother number nine triple h versus yeah that that match um mm, it, it just mm, it was it was it was okay, but it, nah, man. And at that point, we're thinking, okay, Roman's turning heel, and Undertaker's retired for good. But he he didn't want that to be his last match, obviously. So, um, so yeah, he still didn't turn Roman heel. That that if that was any time to turn Roman heel was when he was facing the Undertaker at WrestleMania. That should have been it. That should have been it. But they didn't do it. So. Yeah. Randy Orton WrestleMania 25. We spoke about this match last week, so I won't go on about it too much. Yeah. But yeah, could have been everything this. A white hot feud, two guys in their prime full of familial rage. Should have been a big, yeah. horrible, violent spot fest. Instead, WWE tried to go a bit clever with it. Implementing the rule if Trips got DQ'd, he'd lose the title because that's exactly what you want to blow no. off a feud featuring home invasions and no. loved ones being killed. They, that was a big mistake too. They should have just let it be what it was, bro. If anything, a no DQ match. Because you know Triple H would have purposely got himself DQ'd. Because he doesn't, you know, it was bigger than the title. It was personal. It should have been a no DQ'd match. For the with a match that centers around the ref telling Triple H to calm down, big lad. Following around like a concerned parent. Reminding him not to play too rough with the other boys. Thrilling stuff. Also, the crowd was burned out from Taker mm -hmm. HBK earlier to the point where even Trips and Orton busting out each other's finishes in the first few minutes couldn't spark a reaction. Terribly nope. booked, awkwardly placed on the card. The match never enters second gear. So big moments like Triple H catching Orton's leg mid punt, they barely raise a murmur. It's yeah. so awkward. Number eight, Triple H versus Chris Jericho, WrestleMania 18. Triple H has only main evented two WrestleManias as a babyface. This is the second one. 
It's also bad. Sorry, Triple H, please retweet for awareness. <laughs> Similar problems plagued this match between Trips and Y2J. Two legends had yep. already provided an emotional main event a few matches earlier, and the booking also hamstrung how the match could be effectively agented. Rock versus Hogan left the crowd poop from cheering, but yeah. also WWE hadn't really booked a Triple H versus Chris Jericho feud going into the event. They booked a Triple H versus Stephanie McMahon feud, with the first ever undisputed champion perennially being the third most important element at play. Mm. That meant when the actual match started and the heel took control, Jericho didn't have enough credible heat on him to provide that extra juice a match needs to draw the audience in for the big comeback. Also, the production of the match is so f***ing weird. Triple H entered to a sh drowning pool cover of his theme. And even worse, there was no <laughs> video package for the main event of oh, WrestleMania. Yeah. The year after my way, what the f*** are you playing at, WWE? Yeah, you gotta have a video package. My way is easily one of the best WrestleMania video packages of all time. Stone Cold, The Rock, WrestleMania 17, that video package, I can watch it still and I get goosebumps. Talking about it gives me goosebumps. A main event has to have a good video package. This is it. This is the last match of the night. This needs to be it. WWE, the last reminder to the audience and crowd of why they should care. Yep. It's gone. Madness. And they really didn't care. And trust me, the crowd really didn't care. Again, sorry, Triple H. Number seven, Psycho Sid versus The Undertaker, WrestleMania 13. This was supposed to be Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels too, but that didn't work out because it conflicted with Shawn's current position of being CEO of Prick Incorporated. Instead, <laughs> Bret contented himself with wrestling one of the best Mania matches of all time with Steve Austin, mm -hmm. leaving show-closing duties to WWF champion Psycho Sid. And yes, WWE spelled it. S-Y-C-H-O in a move designed to annoy me and me alone versus Hieronymus Bash. In terms of work rate, it's a little bit like promising someone a Black Forest Gatto and then serving them a plate of wet soil with a small flag planted in it and on the flag is written the word sorry. For starters, Brett interrupts the match to have a moan and HBK is insufferable on commentary so we're constantly reminded of what the match could have been. There's insanely long rest spots, almost no WrestleMania main events take place in front of a crowd this quiet. They perk Damn. up for the final few spots, but for the longest time, this match appropriately dies a death. Number six, Roman Damn. Reigns versus Brock Lesnar 2, WrestleMania Ooh. 34. Ah, the difficult second album, especially when one of the reasons people like the first album isn't on the second album, and yeah. also the album is really boring, and everyone hates it, and shouts so loud that you can't actually hear the album, and that makes you hate it even more. This metaphor got away from me a bit at the end there. Point is, at WrestleMania 31, Lesnar fought Reigns, and everyone thought it would be terrible, but in actuality, it was great. They no. It was seven good. bells out of each other. The audience turned Lesnar super babyface, so that gave us the match story and then the shocking twist ending. Mm -hmm. Three years later, Lesnar and Reigns met again and bloody hell, literally and proverbially. The crowd were bored of Lesnar's finish spamming by this point, but yeah. still hated Reigns, leaving them without a dog in the fight, pun definitely intended. Without the promise of a cash-in, the crowd turned on the match and turned on it hard, and neither man could do much of anything to bring them back, with each finisher and kick-out compounding the frustration that after three long years of the Roman experiment, nothing really had changed. I was saying boo -ons. Number five. Yeah, man, that match, it, it, it didn't matter. <clears throat> and we all thought they were going to give the championship to Roman then, and they pulled an audible, and they didn't. So it just didn't matter. I will say this build up again of their match is a lot more on the stakes. Roman is a different character now. Brock is a different character now. This probably on paper may be their best match at Mania. This should be their best match at Mania. And there needs to be blood. If there's no blood on this match, what's the point? There needs to be blood here. Brock is going for blood. There needs to be blood. Hopefully, I'm willing to bet, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed, this will be their best WrestleMania match, and we can have it no more. No more after this. No more. No more of them going at it. Main event WrestleMania. The Miz versus John Cena WrestleMania 27, <clears throat> aka that time that a main event of Raw main evented WrestleMania. No number of expertly crafted hate me now video packages could elevate just how low rent Mania 27's WWE Championship match felt. Surprisingly, mm -hmm. after spending the last four months booking Miz to look like a joke champion, it did not create a trademark big fight feel when it came to Cena yeah, running up on Miz for that title. Then the match ended by double count out, which left everyone feeling confused and angry. Then The Rock came out. Then the anonymous Raw general manager shtick, because 
because again, this is an episode of Raw. The match is restarted. The heel wins mm -hmm. the main event of WrestleMania. Sure, why not? I know that with the relentless, desperate march of wrestling, the Mania main event is rarely the big end of year blow off that it used to be. But using the biggest match of the year for nothing else other than to set up next year's wrestling. That's really what that meant. That main event was to set up next year's main event. That's all it was. If you want to be honest, that's all it really was, bro. Just to set up next year's main event. That's it. Like, really, the WWE Championship was an afterthought. It was The Rock, Cena. That was the match anyone ever cared about. So, Mania, how can this feel anything other than cheap? Number four, Hulk Hogan versus Sergeant Slaughter, WrestleMania 7. While it's true that Hulk has been part of some <clears throat> of the best moments in WrestleMania history, he's also definitely been part of some of the worst. After the mm -hmm. one-two punches of Mania's five and six, Hogan versus Savage being superb, and Hogan versus Warrior somehow living up to the hype, the wheels massively fell off the wagon with Mania 7. Warrior's WWF title run had underperformed, so Vince pivoted back, as he always does. Does yep. to Hulk Hogan. Warrior lost the belt to Sergeant Slaughter. A forever mid-carder, unconvincingly promoted to main event heel by becoming an Iraqi sympathizer as WWE used the real-life Gulf War to make some sweet cash. While flag-waving US face versus dastardly foreigner was a tried and tested formula, take that Frenchie WrestleMania 3, the foreign menace usually wasn't plastered all over the news at the time alongside real footage of real people real dying. Fans mm -hmm. did not respond to the storyline to the point where WWE had to change the venue new for Mania 7 owing to shocking ticket sales. Then the main event Damn. happened and believe it or not, Hulk Hogan versus 42 year old never main evented a pay-per-view before Sergeant Slaughter wasn't match of the year. It was intensely boring, slow to the point of comatose, filled with clumsy, unimpactful moves. Not even Hogan doing a rare blade job could inject much into a match that had already died before it started. Damn. Just a horrible watch. Number three, Hulk Hogan versus Sid Justice, WrestleMania 8. This Hulk Hogan's all really over this list. Although you wouldn't know it from the crowd, they were bafflingly loud throughout this walk, punch, walk, kick, rest, hold, riddled, snooze. WrestleMania 8 was supposed to be Hogan versus Flair. Didn't happen for a bunch of different reasons, which we've gone into before. Trust me, we have. Because Vince got a Hogan, instead of ending with the super personal Flair versus Macho Man WWF Championship match, which saw a new babyface champion crowned for f sake, they went with Hogan <laughs> versus Sid Justice. Nothing on the line, no reason to care, apart from the company saying, maybe it might be possibly be Hogan's farewell match. And it wasn't. It was also a match that was booked to end in a f***ing DQ. You heard me. The main event of WrestleMania 8 ended in a disqualification and a botched disqualification at Damn. that. Papa Shango was supposed to break up the pin following Hogan's leg drop, but the timing was off, so Sid Justice had to just kick out. Instead, an accidentally monumentous moment that received zero fanfare because it wasn't supposed to happen. Then a post-match beat down before the Ultimate Warrior could make his return. Hooray. Ultimate Warrior then, of course, be gone from the company again before SummerSlam, so just boo. Boo to it all. Damn. Number two, Yokozuna versus Bret Hart, WrestleMania 9. Don't go anywhere. We're staying with Hulk Hogan for a bit more. <laughs> 1992 and 1993 were huge transition years for WWE. Between WrestleMania 8 and WrestleMania 9, as a result of poor booking and the steroid scandal, WWE lost the following people. Ric Flair, Sid Justice, Roddy Piper, British Bulldog, Damn. Ultimate Warrior, Jake Roberts, and for most of the year, Hulk Hogan. Vince also in insanely relegated Macho Man to the commentary desk, putting the final nail in the coffin of the 80s wrestling boom. In an almost mad scramble, Vince promoted Bret Hart to the face of the company and found the biggest non-steroid user he could find in Yokozuna to play the villain. So what should have been Hart versus Macho Man became Hart versus Yoko, which isn't great as the big Samoan couldn't mm -hmm. work longer than a 10 minute match, but hey, Hart would surely beat him, right? New face of the company, etc, etc. No, after a oh. sluggish nothing match in which Yokozuna infamously went to the finish five minutes early, early because he was dead on his feet, the bad guy won. Then Hulk Hogan came out, challenged Yoko to a title match which was accepted, then he won because Vince got cold feet on running with anyone less than the Hulkster at the top of the company. A terrible moment to kickstart the most terrible era in wrestling history. And number one, Triple H versus Roman Reigns, WrestleMania oh, 32. Oh man. I, I, my first mania. It was my first mania that I've ever attended. And I cannot tell you how dispiriting it was to watch this live. Fun fact, I've never actually gone back and watched it in its entirety on the network. And you couldn't make me at 
from gunpoint between babyface cena and babyface reigns there have been a number of we don't want this mania main events but usually mm -hmm. the fans get angry about it and that energy translates into something that's the very least entertaining the aforementioned mania 31 mania 22 when the fans turn cena heel and triple h babyface yep. mania 23 same thing but at yep. mania 32 i don't know man it just broke us the show was too long everyone was tired there was no way i think it was like an eight hour that's right before they went to the two two day format because wrestlemania was just overbooked with too many matches i think this was one of the last few wrestlemanias correct me if i'm wrong that was like fucking eight hours the show was literally eight hours damn near and of course no one wanted to see roman reigns again in the main event no one wanted this no one no one yeah, this just this pay per view was just too long, and no one really wanted Roman to win, but we kind of knew Roman was going to win, and it, it just combination of pay per view being too long and no one wanting this to actually happen and wanting Roman to win just was a recipe for disaster. Now, Brian was gone for real this time. Ambrose had just had a stinker with Brock. Yep. Everyone else was injured. There was just nothing but Roman. <sighs> it was unwanted, inevitable, but even so, they took 27 goddamn minutes to get there. They booked a really dull match and shush does as the match went along a miserable time watching live can't imagine how bad it must have been for you poor sods watching at home are there worse matches i mean probably i mean lawrence taylor versus bam bam bigelow is a ludicrous match that has a mid carder versus a footballer in the main event of mm -hmm. wrestlemania the fatal four-way at mania 2000 was a bit shit as well but both were a million times more fun and just a live feeling than this dog's cock what a shame and that's our list what's been your least favorite wrestling yeah, Roman Reigns and Triple H is riddled all over this and Hulk Hogan, man. Uh, yeah, hopefully, like I said in the video, this year's main event is leagues better. The buildup has been much better. What's on the line is much more important. Unification match. Hopefully, keeping my fingers crossed that they do a good job on this year's main event. Because to be honest with you, outside of the main event and... Uh, edge versus aj styles and stone cold coming back there's not much on this show i actually care about oh and potentially cody rose coming coming to mania uh making his uh return uh on screen at mania that's it it's like four things i actually care about on two nights and a little bit of becky and sasha uh, i mean becky and um and uh bianca that's about it. Everything else I really don't care about. I, I just don't. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, like I said, the main event is at least worth everybody's money. It has to be. It has to be. Last year's main event was fantastic. They got to. They got to. They got to turn it up. There needs to be flames. <laughs> there needs to be explosions. Blood. We need the whole nine, man. You, if you're going to do this for a third time, the main eventing WrestleMania for a third time, you got to give us everything. And Roman has to win it. Finally. Roman has to fucking win it. The way we, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he won it last year, but he needs to beat Brock. And then be done with this feud so we'll see how it happens man but comment down below let me know what's your worst wrestlemania main event match ever in your opinion if they didn't list it here on the video but i appreciate all the love and support road to 80k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace